I was born in Boston, Massachusetts in the year 2000 to a pretty poor family, but I was born into a Christian home. My dad was a full-time youth pastor. My mom was a stay-at-home mom with me and my older sister, Kelsey. And at some point, my dad started feeling from the Lord like he was supposed to provide more significantly for our family. So he tried starting his first business, which became pretty successful. So my parents decided to leave Massachusetts and move down to Kentucky, where my mom's sister lived. And she had kids the same age. So that's when we were kind of being raised together and everything. They proceeded to start several more businesses and pursue several different enterprises with their friends and family and everything. As that increased, so did the influence of our family in the ministry perspective. And my dad uh, made sure that our family was very integrated. So all me and my four sisters grew up very close very close to the Lord, and we were homeschooled, spending a lot of time with friends and family. A lot of stuff changed for me as soon as I graduated high school. Things got a lot harder. It's harder to be an adult. I lived a very charmed life growing up, and I needed to kind of figure out a little bit more about my purpose, the calling the Lord gave me, the kinds of people that I should be surrounded by, and stuff like that. So life started transitioning pretty significantly for me after graduation, and I tried out different careers, but I consistently maintained construction throughout that time as my primary career. After a lot of trial and error with the career path stuff and COVID and everything, I had to go through a massive life transition. So I lost almost all the friends that I used to hang out with. I got to a really low point and cried out to the Lord for help. And I feel like he answered me and I feel like he directed me to go to YWAM Kona. This is when I was 20. So I decided to listen to him. I went there with my cousin Benjamin, and when we arrived, we uh, we made a lot of really awesome friends. But one stuck out in particular was one of my roommates, Kobe. We hung out a lot at YWAM, we were roommates, and then we ended up also being outreach partners, which is not usually something that happens. They usually have completely separate groups for both of those things. But Kobe and I ended up being on outreach together and we went on outreach to the Bay Area of California and while we were there the church we were working with just acquired this new house that they were didn't really know what to use it for but their idea was to use it for sort of like a guy's ministry house uh, something that guys could li be at live in together do life together do ministry together and probably even have a job as well so to me that sounded really appealing it was a great direction to take immediately after YWAM. So I followed up on that opportunity, came back home for my sister's wedding, and then moved out to California, roomated with Kobe again. And a few months into it, we were both working, the connections in the house were going really strong, and we really wanted to sort of expand that into something that we could do ministry-wise, because our church was going through a lot of transitions and pulled back a lot of their outreaches that they were doing, that we participated in with them before we went to before I moved here, but during our YM outreach. So eventually we decided to take matters into our own hands and just pray for a ministry opportunity of our own, not connected to the church that we could do. And the prime subject was something along the lines of kids our age, friend group style, hangout sessions and stuff like that, that were curious about the gospel. So we decided to take a plan of action. So before I met Jackson, I was born in Canada, in New Brunswick. I have three other brothers. I grew up in a single mom household until I was eight, when we met my stepdad. I, we moved around a lot, so then we settled on a small town in Moncton. We moved away from my family who lived in Nova Scotia. And when we moved to Moncton, I started working at a Christian camp because my grandparents were the only influence of religion that I had in my life. I went to this Christian camp up until high school and then I drifted away from it and started living a very worldly life. I graduated high school, went to college. In college, I studied for educational assistant to work with special needs children in schools. The college I went to, my mom was an instructor at the same college that I was attending, and she brought in an agency called Au Pair in America, which is a live-in nanny that goes abroad. So I thought it would be a really great opportunity because I wanted to travel and I loved working with kids, so it was like a win-win. So I hopped on that opportunity as soon as I graduated college. I flew out to California 
to be an au pair with this family of two kids. So I met Angel at a bowling night that she was at with her friend group. Uh, she had a bit, pretty big friend group of all, au pairs, all from different countries that were living in the Bay Area as nannies. And my friend group had recently met her friend group by chance at Stanford. But I was out of town for that. So this is my first time really meeting everybody. On September 24th, <laughs> we went, all went bowling together and Jackson was back from being out of town. So that was the first time that I met him. And I didn't really talk to him much at first because it was like a huge group of us, but we ended up being on the same team for bowling. <laughs> and he got to see how good I was. <laughs> and it was fun. I think we lost because <laughs> none of us were really good. She was fun, she was cool to hang out with. She shoved a whole spoonful of shaved ice down my throat like within 10 minutes of hanging out with each other. But she was interested in one of the guys that we were, that one of the other male au pairs we were with and she was not a Christian and so I didn't really think much of her besides the fact that she was a cool friend and I couldn't wait to share the gospel with her to see how she would react to that. My relationship with Jackson before we started dating was just friends we were we weren't super close at first it took a little while for me to warm up to him and him to warm up to me because we are very different we're like polar opposites it was a big group of us so it was hard to connect anyways but towards the end it was getting cut down so it was just a few of us so it was easier to spend more time with him as friends <laughs> so our my relationship with angel before we started dating was completely platonic she was struggling with a lot of baggage from her past she didn't really know another way to behave. She wasn't really sure of what she thought of this whole gospel thing, and we had no idea what she was thinking the whole time. At the time, I didn't know if she if she was really taking anything that we said seriously or anything like that, but uh, we really enjoyed her company, so she was, of course, always a part of the social events and everything, but I definitely kept her at an arm's distance, and she definitely did the same for me. We were both like friends, maybe a little bit, cautious to get to know, to get really close to each other. It took a while, but eventually we started growing closer. So the whole time we were friends, he was preaching the gospel to me because I was a non-believer and he was really persistent on changing that. So he would, we would hang out like once a week, maybe twice a week. Towards the end, it would got up to like every night. It was like a group of us hanging out all the time. But in the beginning, they were just preaching and I was not for it. I wasn't against it, but I just wasn't for it. So I was just doing my own thing. Like they would preach to me and I wouldn't like feed into it at all. But then I would go home and on my own, I would read my Bible and do a little bit of this and a little bit of that just to find it on my own. Cause I feel like I didn't want to just follow along on someone else just because they were telling me it was a good thing. So I needed to understand it a little bit on my own. So eventually Jackson and Kobe decided that it was something that they needed to do to move back home. They felt like they were being called to Kentucky. So they left us alone in California. So I had to take this walk on my own. The Lord started speaking to me through reading my Bible and I came to a revelation of understanding that I can have a relationship with the Lord even though he is far away just as the same way that I can still be friends with Jackson when he moved away. It was a turning point in my walk. So the transition from friends to dating was a long process. At that point, me and Kobe had left California to start our own ministry house in Kentucky in our Cincinnati community. Angel, her visa was expiring and was her time with her host parents were ending and a lot of personal things happened with her. And during this long course of time, Angel became a believer. We were able to get her connected with our church. She had to leave her host family and live with a family from the church at that time and then didn't really know where to go next but she had about two months left on her visa so she wanted to do something and that's when her and i started texting again because we hadn't talked in a while we just every once in a while we would i would just ask how she was doing and she was slowly updating me on all these crazy changes that were happening so i asked my mom if she would be open to taking angel on her wing and discipling her for a little bit and when she agreed angel was able to come out and stay with my family for two months so i came out here with two months left of my visa <laughs> about a month into me being in Kentucky. We're still just friends at this point, but we started having more conversations about family and future spouses and the community really influenced me on the idea of having a family 
that is healthy, just seeing all these godly families was really encouraging. So one night I was just writing in my journal as I do. <laughs> so I was writing and I just started praying about like if it was a good time in my life to have a relationship, then I pray that the Lord would bring him to me. But if not, like keep, keep the man away. And two days later after I prayed this prayer, I had a dream from the Lord of me being basically on mission with Angel and our friends and me confessing feelings for her that I did not at the time consciously have. Max was driving me in Sydney home and he asked me if he could talk to me privately. I didn't know what that was about. And Sydney gave me this weird look when she was walking away like she knew what he was going to say but she didn't. She was just like suspicious of it. So after discussing it a lot with my mom and other friends and family, uh, it took, it was a full two days of me just thinking about this, but it wasn't too long. Um, and so the two days go by, I decided that I feel like the Lord was just telling me to just share the dream. So eventually I shared this dream with her. So we sit on the bench and he starts telling me about his dream. It was out of nowhere. <laughs> it was very like, it was a shock, but it wasn't like, it didn't seem like a crazy idea to me, so I was really open to exploring it with him. My parents thought she was a woman of really good character and really, really, really loved and cared about her, and I really loved and cared about her already. So I was just, so yeah, that was sort of, we started slowly transitioning from that point on into a romantic relationship. We just spent a night talking. It was kind of really late, and <laughs> he told me that he fell in love with me way faster than he was expecting and that he wanted to make it official. So we agreed and then we made it official. So I knew Angel was the one after she moved back to Canada and I wanted to be sure if this should continue or not. I didn't want to lead her on if this wasn't going anywhere and I wanted to speed things up if it was. So I decided to bring on two of our mentors from California that got really close to Angel and my parents and my grandparents and the eight of us all entered into a month of prayer and fasting about the relationship. And the goal would be for everybody to sort of come to a consensus at the end. And whatever that consensus was, I would do. So if everybody agreed that this wasn't a good idea, Angel and I would have to break up. But if they decided that this relationship was from the Lord, then all of them, we would proceed uh, uh, to get married. So month goes by, everybody felt peace about it. And that's when I knew she was the one. I felt like I had confirmation already. It was like a prayer that was answered. It was answered like two days after I prayed it. And his dream as well was just another sign of the confirmation. And his mom, <laughs> his mom literally came up to me and she was like, I'm trying to find red flags in you and I can't. And it's weirding me out or something like that. So it was just like another sign that it was probably gonna be a good relationship. I proposed to Angel the same way my dad and my papa proposed to their spouses. So. My papa proposed to Grammy in her childhood home that her dad built. So my great grandpa built this house, Grammy grew up in it, papa proposed to her in the living room. And then about 25 years later, my dad did the same thing with my mom. And we didn't have access to the house anymore. It's not in the family or anything. So I had to drive to that location and figure out a way to propose to her. And we try as we might, we called every real estate agent we knew in Michigan and none of them could get a hold of the person living there. So he was like, we're gonna take a separate car than my family because my dad's gonna work while he's there. He had this whole, whole story going on. So I was like, okay, no questions asked. I'm like, whatever, we're gonna meet your family. I'm, I'm down for it. So we get in the car the next morning. We start driving to Michigan. We get there, we have, I have the address. So I'm like, oh, here, cause I have his phone, the address on it. Um, he drives past the house and then he turns around <laughs> and parks in a no parking zone. And I said, oh, we won't be long. And that's when I messed up. I goofed a little bit. And she was like, why? 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 And then I was like, oh, and I need to get something because I left a ring in my backpack. So he gets out of the car, goes to the trunk, puts the ring box in his hoodie pockets, and gets back in the car so I can see the I can see the box as he's sitting in the seat. And that's when I knew what was going on. Took her. We were standing in front of the house. I told her everything, all the significance of it. Got down on one knee, popped up in this nice diamond ring, and said, will you marry me? And I said yes. <laughs> and she said yes. Well darn, darny darn, house, woman, fiance. I love you, baby. I love you. Oh.
<laughs> we can kiss on the lips now. We're not used to doing that. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Adjusting to the priors was a bit of a change from what I was used to. They were super welcoming, so I didn't feel like an outsider coming into it, which was very nice. And I also knew a lot about them already because Jackson likes to tell stories about his family and talks about his family all the time. So I knew, kind of knew what to expect, but being there firsthand is kind of a different experience. So my family fell in love with Angel right off the bat. She's a very, she's such a wonderful person, huge servant heart, huge help around the house. My mom was instantly swept away. And I think that was part of what impressed my parents initially about her was that she was very, she was a very natural member of the household when she came in. And we had hosted many, we hosted foreign exchange students, whole other couples and families living on the other side of the house and all this other stuff. But Angel was a natural. A natural addition. So just how openly loving they are with each other and it's just so naturally like wanting to spend time with each other was different from what I was used to. I was in a more independent family. We like to do things on our own and we weren't openly affectionate with each other and all the family activities that they like to do together was a lot for me at first. It was kind of overwhelming, but in a good way. So that was something that I had to adjust to. My sisters all loved her. It was an easy, the community loves her. It was a very easy, easy, it was probably the easiest adjustment. We posted many people in our house. Angel was the most natural addition by far. Hi everyone, thank you for watching That's Our Story. <laughs> um, that's how we met. Uh, that's how she became a believer in everything, and now we are here together celebrating this very special day. And we We're just want to so say glad thank you. that you guys are here to celebrate with us. Super special. We can't no, wait to come more. mingle with you all afterwards. Yeah. We're so glad that you could make it. And we will see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> it is I, your merry gentleman. I was a little soft. Because you should keep your word. And that's how I started with Wabbing Ho. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I kept it rolling just for that. How did Jackson ask Angel? How did you? How did Jackson ask out Angel? <laughs> From the top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was my way. Because you said, I'm not sure you can't tell. Hi, I'm Angel. Oh! Yeah. Before I'm a Jackson. <laughs> oh my god!